Welcome everyone. Well, we're back to our challenge today. Our perfectly imperfect coffee table book challenge here at Icky Cheek Designs. Uh, I've been working on a new set of pages and this has been easy because these two pieces were already finished. So it's a matter of actually stitching them in place and adding any additional items that I want. Now, I've said all along that that's going to be the easy way to get some of your pages done is to use some of your existing projects that you want to keep uh, put into a large book and keep. Now, it doesn't have to be full page pieces. You can put smaller pieces together, collage them on a page and do it like that. But when uh, we get through, you can see that the size of this book, once I get it uh, in the book and covered, is going to be pretty large and it's going to be pretty chunky. So it's going to be an interesting object sitting on a coffee table that I think most of my guests would find very hard not to pick up and thumb through. And that's what I'm creating it for is a little entertainment and a little inspiration and a great way to keep my pieces uh, safe. So that uh, being said, I hope that you have already uh, taken the plunge and started your project. <clears throat> now this um, is called the perfectly imperfect. And I really want you to take that to heart because if you realize that nothing in this has to be perfect, it's going to relieve so much pressure and give you the opportunity just to create the way you want to create and make out of these pages whatever you want them to be. The um, whole object is to get many of our projects in a safe place. And, you know, if you're like me, you've got projects stacked up on a shelf and they're okay there, but eventually over time, you know, they do get wear and tear. So getting them put up, not that they won't in a book if people are thumbing through it, but still it has a purpose there. And uh, I don't like creating things that I don't use in a practical way. And so this um, challenge gives us a chance to put all these things into one book, okay? Now, if you're worried about creating a soft book, remember that there are, there are probably a hundred videos on YouTube, if not more, about how to put a book together. I'm gonna put this one together with a simple uh, pamphlet stitch through these uh, through the center of these uh, layouts that I'm making and secure them with a pamphlet stitch to probably what's going to be a cardboard uh, cover that I'm that I will make a soft fabric cover to cover it but uh, finding something big enough with a big enough um, spine for this is is not going to be feasible. So I'm going to have to make my own and probably do that out of cardboard. So I'm on the hunt for good, sturdy cardboard, extra, extra thick and sturdy. And then I will uh, cut it to size that I want. And then I will make a soft cover for it. And that's, it will be a very simple process, actually. It won't be difficult at all. Uh, I want to make a, a soft cover, which I haven't done anything toward that yet and won't until later in the year when I get um, the book itself, the pages done. Uh, our goal in this challenge is to have our pages done by October, sometime in October, 
which gives us until the end of December to get our cover completed and everything put together. So that is doable and I hope that you're going to join us in this. It doesn't take, you don't have to be an expert. Uh, just, just make some pages. You can see that I've cut a back piecing the size that I wanted. When I fold over my book, uh, let's see, let me measure it out for you and tell you just exactly what this is. The book would be about eight inches wide and right at 12 inches long, eight by 12, is going to be the approximate size of this book. And of course the cover might make it just a little bit bigger. It might be more like nine by 13 by the time I get it, uh, the cover actually done. And I don't know how many of these signatures that I will have to put in here uh, by the end of the year, <clears throat> whatever I end up with is what's going in the book. Uh, I don't, I'm not stressing over it. Um, I'm just working on it uh, along. And as you know, I have a couple of, uh, let me pull them out real quick and remind you of what I have finished for the book. Uh, let me find them here. Okay, let's see. This is the one I just finished. Okay, this in my last video, this is the one I just finished. Now, if this side's unfinished, this will be the inside of this one. This will sandwich together, and then when it folds over, this will be a page, and a page, a page, and a page. So it will have four, that makes a uh, four page insert into that signature, okay? Now, besides that one, so that, that's four pages that I'm working on right now. This one is completed. This is my center of my book. When you get to the dead center, this is what you'll open up to this spread here. But this one also has four pages in that. It has this page. You open it up to the center, which is two pages. And it has this page. So right now, if this were put together, you can see the chunkiness of it and the size of it the spine of it is already growing so you can see how that's working out okay I am keeping uh, the finished ones in a bag so that they stay nice until I get ready to use them. All right. And this one is still a work in progress and that I have yet to, to sandwich it with the other one. So as you can see, I'm coming along and I'm, I'm really proud of that. I don't want to, I have to take breaks from it and create other things and other projects, but I try not to take too long of a break. And that way uh, I can consistently get something done on it. One of the hardest things is anything this size is, as you know, is getting, getting it into your hands so that you can sew on it. And uh, so that, you know, that, that probably is the hardest thing so far I've encountered. And I don't have a hoop 
and really don't want to put it in one. Uh, I'm thinking about getting my husband to make me a kind of a lockdown hook. Um, it's hard to explain. I have it in my head. If I ever get it made, I certainly will show it to you. But that would handle large pieces without scrunching them all up into a circular hook. Uh, more of the big ones like uh, you might hang something with where you sandwich it in between pieces of wood and uh, keep it taunt that that way. Uh, but right now, uh, I'm just fighting it a little bit, but I am managing to get it in my hand so I can work on it. Uh, I didn't get a video out yesterday. I, you know, for the last three months, I've made a video every day. And... Uh, in February, uh, I am going to take a few breaks, uh, meaning that there might not be a video every day, but uh, there will be, you know, lots of videos through the month. Uh, I have several other things going in my life right now, uh, obligations and events that I need to uh, give my attention to. So. I'm going to have to slow down just a little bit in, in February. Uh, I wish, uh, you know, I could always make the everyday thing because I, I know that those of you who follow me regularly and you you like the inspiration daily, you like to have something to come and see, and, that's, and I love that, and I want to be able to provide that for you. But uh, sometimes it's just not possible. Uh, life has a way of demanding that you pay it some attention. So I also want to remind y'all that uh, please check the community tab. I d am posting there two, at least two times a week, maybe three. And that's where some of my writing, my personal expressions and opinions and on different things are going to go. And just things to entertain too and inform. I love to write. I am a writer, as you know. I have a video series uh, where I am uh, slow stitching and at the same time reading the books that I have written. And um, so it's kind of like story time with Linda. <laughs> and uh, But I do love writing, and so that's a community uh, tab is a place for me to share other things with you. So don't forget to check on that. And uh, let's see, what else is new? Don't have anything else uh, new going on right now. I am still uh, uh, thinking about my uh, stitching porch, my back porch stitching area that I'm going to be uh, decorating this year. Uh, as to what exactly I want to do out there. And we'll, we'll keep you uh, updated on that throughout the year, too. And, let's see. The, uh, I am going to be doing a collab with another YouTube artisan. And that's coming up mm, probably in April. And so I, I'll be keeping you up to date on that one. Uh, we haven't got the details finalized yet, but when I do, I will definitely let you know what's going on. My email address is in the description of my videos if anyone needs to contact me for any reason. Uh, sometimes I know that some of you just don't like to be very public on social media, so you don't like commenting and things like that. But uh, 
So if you need to message me for something, uh, you can always use my email for that purpose. I do want to grow my YouTube channel. So if there is something that you know that would make my channel better, uh, please, I'm up for suggestions. Um, you know, if I can do it, that's, I will, I will. I can't do everything, uh, of course, and I'm not very technically advanced. <laughs> it wasn't in my age when I grew up, so I'm having to learn everything as I go. So I can't do what a lot of other people do. But personally, I think the most important thing to do is to give quality videos in the area in which I'm working. And, and of course, that's stitchery. And, but I do want to share more of the parts of my life, more of the things that I do that have stitchery related. Uh, I haven't been able to get out thrifting in a while, but I'm, I have plans to do that next week with my daughter. So I thought I would try and video some of that and take you along with us and see what we can find uh, as we go thrifting together. And just uh, little things like that. My container gardening for the first time that I'm going to be doing this year uh, as soon as weather permits and spring gets here. Uh, I thought I would take you along on that journey with me also. And with the challenges, uh, this coffee table book challenge, this uh, my stitch by stitch project of the four by four, fours, uh, those two challenges, uh, well, this there's only one challenge, yeah, there's just a project. Um, keeping me busy with that plus the other things that I'm doing. I wanted I wanted to do a diversity of things so that you could find something. If you're not interested in everything, you could find something that you could join in on. Uh, so I want to keep trying to diversify. Uh, finding practical uses for the 4x4s four that we're making in the... Uh, um, stitch by stitch project that is 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 a big priority for me because I do want to to uh, find practical uses for everything um, so working uh, on that too uh, I'm going to be working on more of my greeting cards because I personally have a need for several coming up and so I'm going to be working more on those. But if there's something that, that you think that I could do that would be interesting and improve my channel, I'm always open to suggestions. So don't be bashful and do that. Let me get a sip of coffee here. Also, I wanted to get your opinion on the length of my videos. What do you think about the length? Are they too long? Or are they too short? What is a comfortable length for you when you sit down to watch crafting videos, stitching videos, whatever? What length works best for you? I'd like to kind of get an idea of that because people are so different. And, you know, you don't... Me, I like longer videos, but then... I've had several people tell me that they don't like anything over 15 minutes. <laughs> so I guess we're just all different and it's, I'm gonna get all kinds of different answers to that question, but uh, let me tie this one off. Uh, 
But you know, everybody, I know uh, channels I subscribe to and people I watch, I mean, there's a reason why. Uh, I like uh, what they're doing. I like their style. I, sometimes it's people who are totally different from me and I like to learn from them. Sometimes it's just their mannerisms and and uh, what they share and how they speak that draws me. Um, it's just different reasons why. And again, there's there's a YouTuber for everyone. I'm, I'm sure of that because there's so many of us. But sometimes in a niche, uh, you know, it gets saturated and you feel like, well, you, you never see anything different. You're going over the same thing over and over and over. And uh, so, you know, if you have something that you want me to try, let me know. I'm getting better with that needle thread and don't you think I got that one the first time. I picked up me a, a needle, little needle threader, but it doesn't go through the eye of my needle. This particular needle that I'm using right now has a very small eye on it. So that didn't do me much good until I get a needle with a bigger eye. And I do have some, but then they're a lot bigger needle, period. So I don't want that. I like the smaller needles when I'm slow stitching. I just love what I'm doing. And I hope that comes through in my videos too. Uh, because I want you to feel that I am sincere in what I'm doing. I do it because I love it, and I'm doing it because I want to help other people find the enjoyment, and uh, they're loving it too. And also, uh, since I do so many uh, slow stitch videos that lend themselves to fiber art, um, I just want everyone to realize that there's an artist in them Art is subjective, and art is what you you believe it is. And so, if you've never thought that you were an artist before, I'd like to be able to say that I helped you to come to the conclusion that you are, and that you have a unique talent, and to use it and be proud of it. And don't let anyone discourage you from that. But be smart and practical and realize that not everything you do is any everybody else going to love. Okay? I get likes on my videos, but I get some dislikes too. And I'm thinking, well, what did I do that they dislike so much? But you know... You never know. So, but not everybody is going to love what I do. So, and not everybody's going to love what you do. But that doesn't keep me from doing it. Because, because I love it. There is something... You know, you read all the time about how therapeutic stitching is, but there is something about a repetitive movement that just gives you permission to slow down and just live in the mem moment of sticking that needle through that fabric, sliding it out, and pulling that thread through, feeling it as it moves through those fibers. Ah, oh, 
That is so fulfilling. <laughs> There's just something wonderful about it. I've just been stitching this uh, side around the outside to get it secured before I go to the inside and so I can also remove some of those uh, pins because it is <laughs> a little bit hard to bunch it up in your hands when you got straight pins in there. I've got a burgundy colored thread and my needle uh, working this with it. I'm just uh, actually using up uh, right now some of the leftover threads I have hanging on my light here. And uh, I made a video short that showed the uh, threads hanging on my light. I don't know if you caught that short. I think it was the last one I made or the one before that. <laughs> You can see what I'm talking about when I say my le uh, my leftover threads all hanging from my light. There's a lot of them, usually. And so from time to time, I I just simply use those only whatever color is there is what I get what I use. going to get to the corner here and I have gone around this page getting pretty thick in areas Another reason why I like a little needle because it slips through thicker st stuff faster to me, easier. Okay. This side is secured. All right as secured as to, on, onto the backing I'm talking about. Okay. This week we got a little break in the weather here where I live and it uh, been up in the 50s and 60s uh, during the day and uh, 40s and 50s at night, which is, you know, I can live with that. It's not so cold, you know. Okay, now this side, I had started uh, a few stitches down like that. Uh, that's as far as I've gotten with that. I will be doing some stitching in the inside of here but uh, I'm liking that I'm liking that a lot and this copper color background doesn't it set off the colors in this piece pretty not nice someone asked me to for a close-up of this so that they could see the stitching um, so uh, you can see that there's not a whole lot of stitching on that. It's basically just stitches that are are actually just holding down all those flower petals. Nothing's just real fancy. Okay. This was an interesting piece because some of these, uh, these were some vintage. This was a vintage, all these fabrics crossed here are vintage. 
and uh, I believe this piece back here is vintage. And so I wanted to use uh, a, a few of the, it's kind of a vintage page, kind of an old fashioned looking page. And so and this is a paper clip, uh, just out of paper actually. And I just sewed it down to it. It's got the little paper clip on it. And I, and I just sewed it down and added it in to that. So anyway, that's, uh, what that's looking like right now. Okay, so if you haven't joined our challenge, please be thinking about it. Anybody can do this. It's just making an, a bigger book than you might be comfortable with in the beginning, but it's doable. All the processes are exactly the same. Uh, you don't have to get so entailed, you know, so detailed. Uh, just do some slow stitching, collaging, whatever you want to do, and decide what kind of size book would best fit you. I'm doing the coffee table size, and if you can manage a bigger book, then please jump in uh, with us and try yours. And uh, we uh, can create some beautiful books together this way, okay? Until next time, please stay scrap happy.